folks. So last week I published a video called Five Stupid Things About the Wage Gap, which was about the, the gender pay gap between men and women. And as is typical for that sort of a video, for any video or article that is published on the internet that speaks out supportively on a women's issue, uh, the video was bombarded with incredibly negative comments and, and people voting thumbs down on it. And this is the sort of thing that happens all the time with videos that are uh, pro-feminism or pro-women's issues. And in fact, knowing that that kind of reaction is forthcoming is part of the fun of doing a video like that. At least for me, it's getting to see just how indignant those anti-feminist men's rights types will get in response to utterly mundane, conventional statements like women earn less money than men and that's a problem that we should do something about. But I want to come back to that uh, ridiculous overreaction to things like that at the end of this video. To start with, I want to actually consider some of the legitimate questions that people raised in comments on that video. Questions that were raised both by people who seemed to mostly agree with me and from people who disagreed with me, and even some people who thought that I was an idiot and an asshole and brainwashed and all these other things. Um, one of the questions that came up over and over is uh, what causes the wage gap? That's not something I really talked about in the Five Stupid Things video. I was talking more about the nature of it and different specific aspects of it that I found troublesome, like the fact that it disproportionately affects people of color versus white people, but I didn't really get into the causes. So what causes the wage gap? And another question that came up was, how do we know that the wage gap is due to sexism? Well, I think there are good answers to both of those questions. I think we can talk with a fair amount of confidence about what causes the wage gap. And I think we can say, again, with a fair amount of confidence, that sexism at least plays a very significant factor in the wage gap. And I'm going to start talking about it by showing you an article that I think is relevant on the subject. It's an article from uh, Money Magazine, which is a subsidiary of Time Magazine. It was published uh, just a few days ago, actually, and it's called The Truth Behind the Wage Gap. One of the things the article does is it attempts to make apples-to-apples -apples comparisons in the data on the uh, wage gap, and that's something that people in the comments on my video complained about as well. They say, well, you're comparing average median income, that's where we get the uh, 77 or 78 cents on the dollar amount for women's earnings versus men, but they say that's not ex exactly fair because it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. You have to factor in things like number of hours worked, you have to factor in things like people working in different fields, people with different levels of education. One of the things this money article does is it strives to make such an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. And it refers to a report prepared by uh, CONSAD Research Corp for the United States Department of Labor, which says that if you correct for all these various factors, the wage gap actually shrinks from about uh, 23 or 22 cents between men and women to between 5 and 7 cents, which is not nearly as drastic, but is still undeniably a gap. Men are still making more than women, even if they're only making five to seven cents more on the dollar. Now, just like the 22 cents on the dollar gap that we get when we compare the average median incomes of men and women, the CONSAD figure of between five and seven cents on the dollar of a gap between men and women is an average of all people studied. It gets either larger or smaller depending on what particular industry you're examining. If you narrow your analysis to one particular field of work, you might find a larger gap or a smaller gap. So taking that idea, the authors of this money article conducted their own analysis. They got some numbers from an organization called Payscale, which is a salary research firm, and they did an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of what they found to be the wage gap between men and women working in particular fields. Here's the chart from the Money article. It breaks the wage gap down by particular industries, and the industries that it looks at are those as defined by the United States Census. And after adjusting for various factors and breaking things down by industry, this study from Money Magazine using pay scale numbers found that there is still always a wage gap between the earnings of men and women, and that this gap, even though it fluctuates in size, depending on what industry you're looking at, always favors men. 
There is not a single industry on this chart where the wage gap favors women. There is always a gap, and women are always on the lower end of it. If the wage gap that we see in this study and in other similar studies that have been done through the years that have established the existence of a wage gap that always or almost always favors men and disadvantages women were the result of some factor other than sexism or were simply the result of things never being exactly equal between two groups, then wouldn't we expect women to come out on the top side of it at least every once in a while, perhaps even maybe half as often? But we don't see a wage gap that just averages out to disadvantage women, but if we break it down by industries, it it's, has women coming out on top sometimes and men coming out on top other times. In every industry in this study, men are always in the superior position. Women are always the ones that are making less. That, to me, suggests that sexism plays a role. But that's not the only reason why I say that we have reasonable evidence to assume that sexism plays a significant role in the creation of the wage gap. There's something else as well. Though the wage gap in the U.S. has remained roughly the same size for the last 15 years, it has shrunk significantly over the last 50 years. If we track the size of the wage gap over time, and one way we can do that is by looking at this table created by the National Committee on Pay Equity based on census data, we can see that in 1960, the average woman made not 78 cents on the dollar compared to a man, but 60 cents on the dollar compared to a man. What has changed in the last 50 years to allow us to shrink the wage gap? Well, for one thing, in 1963, there was the enactment of the Equal Pay Act. It was signed into law by President John Kennedy, and it made it a federal crime to practice wage discrimination on the basis of sex. When sex discrimination is harder to do, the wage gap shrinks. Are there any other reasons for suspecting that sexism plays a significant role in the wage gap? Well, how about the existence of gender biases? Gender biases have been well established by many studies. The gender of a person can affect our perception of that person and the choices we make regarding that person, as well as the way we perceive and the choices we make for ourselves, whether we are a man or a woman. One study that I'll mention specifically in this video is described in this article on the Huffington Post. The study is titled, Leaning Out, Teen Girls and Leadership Bias. It was conducted by Making Caring Common, which is a project of the Harvard School of Education. It surveyed 20,000 middle school and high school students, and it found among both boys and girls significant biases against the idea of women in leadership positions. 23% of girls surveyed preferred male political leaders. 40% of boys surveyed preferred male political leaders. And 36% of boys surveyed preferred male business leaders. Gender bias is a real thing. It really affects people's lives. It's something that we all have to struggle with, whether we are men or women, whether we are conscious of it or unconscious of it. On a personal note, I have found myself guilty of this in the past, and I know many women who have experienced it. If you are a writer or you're friends with writers, no doubt you have either experienced yourself or been told of the phenomenon of how much easier it is to get published if you submit work under a male-sounding name or a gender-neutral name. Many women writers, even to this day, submit work using their initials rather than their full name if their first name is obviously feminine. They find it easier to get accepted. How can we seriously doubt that sexism plays a significant role in a wage gap that almost always disadvantages women when these gender biases are such a well-demonstrated part of our culture and our personalities, and when sexism is arguably even more deeply ingrained in us than racism? I've often said in discussions of the problems with racial inequality, especially here in the United States, that my country was founded on white supremacy, but that's not entirely true. It wasn't just founded on white supremacy, it was founded on male supremacy. And just as that heritage of white supremacy continues to create troubles for us in society today, so does that heritage of male supremacy. It continues to warp the perceptions of women 
and it continues to limit their opportunities to this very day. And the wage gap is only one tangible example of that kind of effect. Now, in light of everything I've said up to this point, and in light of the fact that the wage gap's existence is accepted by a broad consensus of people, most of whom consider it a serious issue worthy of attention, what are we to make of those who continue to deny it, who continue to say that it is a myth, that it has been debunked, or that it exists, but it's not something that we really need to worry about, because it's just a byproduct of free choice, that women are making less money because they simply choose to make less money. What are we to make of these people? Well, it's interesting because sometimes they will accuse people who believe in the wage gap and advocate for taking action against the wage gap of being conspiracy theorists, but I actually think that it's the other way around. I think the conspiracy theorist comparison is much more appropriate for the wage gap deniers. First, they tried to deny, and some of them still try to deny, that it exists at all. But for most of them, the fact of the existence of the wage gap has become so well known that it is capable of penetrating even the thick wall of their delusion and apathy. So they shift from saying the wage gap doesn't exist to saying, well, the wage gap exists, but it's nothing that we should worry about. I have literally heard and read people saying, in response to my video, yeah, the wage gap exists. Women make less money than men. But why should we care? Why is it a problem? As though the mere fact that half the population is less economically empowered than the other half, and that within that half of the population, those who are people of color or LGBT people are even less empowered than the rest, as though that in and of itself is not a problem worthy of attention. What do you say to someone like that? And at what point do you realize that it's probably not worth trying to have a conversation with this person anymore if they are so willing, eager even, to shrug off the disadvantagement of a huge portion of humanity because they think that it shouldn't be a problem. Never mind that many of those people who are affected by it consider it to be a serious problem that we need to do something about. They've decided for themselves it's not a problem, so we shouldn't worry about it. What, what do you say to someone like that? And more importantly, how much time and energy are we really willing to spend on answering that question when there is a far more urgent question that we need to answer and that I believe we can answer? And that question is, what do we do about the wage gap? How do we fix it? This is another question that came up in the comments of my Five Stupid Things video over and over again, both from people who agreed with me and from people who disagreed with me and doubted the importance of the wage gap. What do we do about it? Well, there are a couple things we can do about it. And first, I want to draw your attention to another article from Money Magazine, this one from about a year ago, and it's titled, Five Ways That Women Can Close the Wage Gap. This article lists five strategies that women can use to get higher pay for themselves. And it describes things like being smarter when you negotiate for your salary, either when you're up for a raise or when you are hired for a new job. Negotiate for higher pay early. Don't just wait until you've been there a few years push for the pay that you feel you deserve as soon as you get your foot in the door, push for promotions, look for work in fields of occupation that have a smaller wage gap, that have more pay equity between the genders, and don't be afraid to promote yourself, toot your own horn. When you do something good that deserves praise and deserves reward and could put you up for a bigger raise, make sure that your boss, your manager, whatever, knows about it. Now, I agree with all of that, but I want to stress that I don't think it is solely the responsibility of the women affected by the wage gap to try and close the wage gap. In fact, I get the impression that a lot of women reading an article like this will feel like they're being told stuff they already know. So there's something else that we can do. There's something else that we can push for that I think will really help close the wage gap, and it's called wage transparency. And there is a bill that has been introduced in Congress repeatedly over the last several years that is called the Paycheck Fairness Act that includes measures that will encourage wage transparency. That is, companies having policies that allow workers to know what each other is making. So that if you are being paid less than other people who are doing a similar job than you, you can find out about it. 
and you can correct that situation either in-house by going to your manager and demanding a fair wage or by filing suit with the Equal Opportunities Commission and you can have the evidence where you can say look here I'm making less than this other person and I want this to be rectified. Wage transparency is a very important tool that everybody should have. We know in circumstances where sex discrimination is more difficult to get away with that the wage gap shrinks. Wage transparency shrinks the wage gap. Companies that practice wage transparency have a smaller gap between men and women. Companies that are unionized, where workers have the protection of collective bargaining with which to haggle for better salaries, have smaller wage gaps. This stuff works. This is a concrete, proven method of attacking the wage gap and shrinking it, and we should all support it. Call your congressman, call your senator, tell them you support the Paycheck Fairness Act. Vote for candidates that support wage transparency. This works. This is a concrete action that we can all take that will help us to shrink the wage gap. There's one last point I'd like to make before I wrap this up. It's something that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Nothing I have said here or that I said in my five stupid things about the wage gap video is remotely controversial outside of a relatively small circle of anti-feminist reactionaries who operate mainly on the internet and swarm in to throw tantrums in the comment sections of videos and articles that speak out in support of feminism or in support of taking action on women's rights issues. You can tell a lot about this group of people by how enraged they become in response to hearing opinions as conventional and mundane as women make less money than men and that's a problem that we should do something about. The message of these people is, the way things are, is the way things ought to be. So stop trying to change things and stop talking about this. And my response to those people and that message is twofold. First, no. Second, go fuck yourselves. Thanks for watching, everybody.